Here we have the website for DonutConf, a yearly conference in which the latest and greatest in donut technology gets announced. And here we have the page for the opening keynote, and it tells us the exact date and time that the keynote is. So what can we do to localize the date and time so that no matter where you're located, you're going to be seeing the right date and time for your specific location? Well, we'll do this in a couple of steps. First, we'll double check the CMS and make sure that our setup is done correctly. Then we're going to add in some custom code that's going to change the date and time depending on where you are. Then we'll connect that date and time to text on the page. And then finally, we'll test different locations through Google Chrome's developer tools. So here we have the CMS event page currently as it's set up in Webflow, and we already have the date and time set up and connected to the back end of the CMS. Let's quickly jump into the back end and make sure that it's set up correctly. We'll go into our event settings, and we're gonna go down to the event date and time, and we're just gonna make sure that the include time picker is turned on. And we'll save that, and we'll look at an example in one of our events. And here we can see that we have a date and time set up for each event. Since that looks good, we'll jump back into the page. And now we're going to add in a custom code embed to the page. So we'll go over to add. We'll add in an embed block right at the top. And now we're going to add in our custom code. And I'll keep a link to this in the description. We'll paste all that in. Now let's quickly go through the code and see what's actually happening here. First at the top, we're initializing our script. And then underneath that, we're creating a new date from the date that we've added to the Webflow CMS. Now you notice that there's a big red box that telling us that our code might be formatted incorrectly, but we can just ignore that. And at the very end of that, we're stating the time zone that it's in. And we're also adding a little bit of code onto the end to make sure that it displays correctly in Safari. After that, we're stating exactly how we want the date to be formatted as well as the time. And then lastly, we're binding those date and time formats to specific classes. And that's how we're gonna be able to actually attach it to specific pieces of text on the page. Firstly, we're going to fix up the CMS connection. You'll see here that I've added add your CMS element name, which is where we're going to add our CMS element name. So let's scroll down to the bottom and go underneath the script where we're going to add in the actual date and time from the CMS. And we're going to copy this purple field. Now you want to go into any notes app or somewhere where we can actually see what the inside of the CMS field looks like. And you'll notice that it looks like a bunch of gibberish, but the only thing that we need is the name of the CMS field in the back end. So we're gonna copy this, go back to our project, and paste that where we had the add your CMS element name. And now we'll go back down and delete that CMS field. Let's save this and we can format it differently later if we need to. Now we wanna connect those date and time classes to the actual pieces of text on our page. So first we'll go to our date, we'll add a date class, and then we'll do the same for the time. Now that we've done that, we can publish that. And once that's published, if we go to the live page and refresh it, we'll see that our code is already working. It's showing us a different time and date depending on where we're located. But we can see the time isn't exactly matching up to the time we want it to. And so what we'll do is we'll copy the time zone that we're located in, go back to our Webflow project, reopen up the custom code. We'll go to the end of our date snippet and replace the time zone with our time zone and we'll publish that one more time. Now we can see that the date and time is correctly set around our location. And obviously we want this to be the location that the actual event is taking place. Now that we've done this, we wanna actually test that it's showing different times in different locations. And so one way we can do this is to book several flights in locations around the world and then recheck the website whenever we've landed in those locations. One other way that we can do this is through the Google Chrome developer tools. So we'll inspect our page, we'll find sensors in the more tools menu, and this way we can override our location to simulate viewing the website from somewhere else. So here I can go to Berlin and I'll refresh the page. And I can see that both the date and time has changed to reflect the location. And I can test this with other locations as well. Now we've set up our date and time and know that it's displaying okay, we can go back and reformat it in any way that we want. For example, we can remove the time zone name so it's just showing the date and time. Or we can change the language of the date and time to adapt depending on the different users' locations. 
So we'll change out this English US for navigator.language, save and close that, and then publish it again. And now using our override, we can see that the language is changing depending on where we are. So there we have it. The date and times for our events is now changing for wherever the user is located. Finally, we can get on with our donut conference.